Welcome back. It's Rebuild America on the Road. We're in Washington, D.C., and, boy, we've had a great, great day. I want to thank Steve and Kristen and John and Sarah and Jim and Amy and all the folks back in Boston and here in D.C. for putting on a great, great, great show. We've had an incredible lineup. And, uh, you know, when you, when you have a great meal, this is how I feel, we have uh, the dessert, you know, the special part of the meal, and we're very lucky. Uh, to have um, as our final guest on this uh, great show today, United States Secretary of Labor, Hilda Solis. Uh, so good to have you, Secretary. Thank you. Real pleased to be here with you. Well, it, it is my pleasure and my honor to have you. We've been talking to some great people that I know that you have worked with. A uh, former colleague, Representative Danny Davis of Illinois, has been with us, as has been Representative Tim Ryan of mm-hmm. Ohio. Uh, great labor leaders like Randy Weingarten and Terry O'Sullivan of the AFT in Leuna and, and uh, great environmentalist Joe Rome uh, over at the Center for American Progress, Rebecca Thies over at, at the EPI, Economic Policy Institute, and a great reporter, Joe Williams, used to cover the White House and, mm-hmm. and you guys. Um, so this is, this is great. This is, this, is the, this is the cream uh, on, on my cake. I'm very, very happy. Um, today in America, we have people who are – who are fighting, uh, you know, to put food on their table, to pay the rent, to get the college the class. And unfortunately, what we have is only one party in this country, um, that is the Democratic Party, that is working to help the 99%. And it is sad because I know <coughs> when you first entered Congress, the Republican Party would work on a lot of different things. But today, unfortunately, that's not the case. And I just think that we um, owe the president uh, and yourself and others, uh, you know, uh, a a real thanks because you guys have fought for the American people. And and we need to reelect him, uh, the president, and we need to make sure that people realize that their future is at stake if they go in another direction, if they go in the direction of Mitt Romney and Speaker Boehner and Mitch McConnell, then they are going to basically end up in a third world nation. And it's just not me saying this. I mean, we've talked to people in this country, uh, callers who have called me who have $60,000 student loans, you know, uh, who are working at at a CVS, people who are, are basically trying to scrape dollars by. And the real choices are stark and i want you to talk about the experience that you've had working with the president who cares this is a guy who's a community organizer Mm -hmm. he cares about people and what is at stake if the president doesn't get a chance to continue his vision and his um his works for the american people well first of all thank you for having me it's a a great pleasure And, and your lineup today i mean you have a lot of good friends and people that are progressive that really care about the values of working class people and a fair democracy and not just giving lip service to what that means, but actually working hard in the trenches. And I miss that as a former (laughs) member of the House. I really do. I think the best job I have, though, right now is to help people uh, get back to work, give them confidence, but also provide whatever resources and assistance that we can. And we have to be out there every single day. That's why I'm proud to represent this president out there in the field, talking to regular folks, people that I that I met uh, across this country that all they want is a fair shake. They want to be treated fairly. They want to know that if they show up to work, they get paid their wages, that there's a guarantee, that there's protection, and that there's some job security, and that the next person that comes in, whether it be the re-election of the president or whoever, that they're going to look out for them, and that the values that all of us work towards, that American value and ethic, you work hard, You pay your dues, and you should have some semblance of some guarantee that you're going to be treated fairly. In the last few years, we've seen a lot of that erosion in the middle class, especially with the union households and with people who have who are fighting hard every day. It it is it's disgusting for me to know that there's so many people that are working so very hard, and there's there's no recognition by some of the members in the Senate and the House that understand what's really going on with working class people. That's not a bad word, working class people, or people who work to better themselves and come even to this country to better their lives, as my parents did. But there are millions and millions of Americans who are looking for leadership and hope. And I know that this president has put everything on the line to get to that point. 
and we still have a ways to go. You got to keep in mind, and the people need to listen, that when we when we came into office, we took this, we took an oath to say that we're going to work really hard, we're going to uphold the Constitution, and we're going to treat people fairly. Now, there are other people on the other side that read that differently. We want to help people get ahead. We want to create more jobs, and we are doing it. How do you, how do you explain that in two and a half years, we created 4.4 million private sector jobs when, in the last eight years of the Bush administration, on a monthly basis, he was only able to create 11,000 jobs? You tell me where the math goes wrong there. Oh. And why are we not talking about those kinds of things? Okay, people don't want to talk about the past. Let's talk about the future. But let's talk about how this president has taken us from point A now to point B. Another figure, and we're talking with the, the, the former representative from California and the great now Secretary of Labor, Hilda Solis, who I will believe will go down as one of the best Secretaries of Labor this country's ever had. We had a situation in January of 2009, a crisis in this country. We're losing 700,000 jobs thanks to the republican party and president george w bush and mitt willard mitt romney wants to take us exactly that same thing they were talking about in the in the early part of this century less taxes less regulation and here is mitt romney today has the audacity to go before the naacp and talk about really not knowing where you are and not giving a damn about what you're saying. Cut number two. If our goal is jobs, we have to stop spending over a trillion dollars more than we take in every year. And so, and so to do that, I'm going to eliminate every non-essential expensive program I can find. That includes Obamacare, and I'm going to work to reform and save... <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> With a video we don't have, unfortunately, oh. but he was rattled because he doesn't get this. You know, he likes to be in the quiet room. He doesn't like anybody challenging him. He, of course, is the Senate is the governor's son. You know, it's Will and Mitt Romney here. Fact is, is that there are people in that room. There were African Americans, there were white people, there were Latinas and Latinos and Asians and everybody. And that's health care. You're trying to stay alive. It's giving somebody a chance to be better, to be healthier. Right. And this guy wants to take it away. You know, when I think about the Health Care Reform Act, it did wonders even on a personal level. My father experienced some very uh, severe uh, diseases and, and infirmaries. And without that you know, closure of the donut hole in the last two years, he would have lost thousands of dollars. He was able to get his medication and get a rebate at a lower cost. And thank goodness that the president saw fit to fight so hard for that. And think about all the young kids, the kids that could stay on their parents' health care plan 26 years and under. That is saving households. I can't tell you how much money uh, by family, but you keep hearing it when I go out in the field. I hear about that. And also the uninsured in the Latino population, 9 million Latinos are getting health care because of the health care reform. Not waiting for two years. It's happening right now, buddy. It's happening right now. So Romney does not understand what's going on. We have a crisis in terms of skyrocketing health care costs. This bill, this legislation will help to put a cap in terms of controlling those costs so that people can get a good quality health care and you don't get it ripped off or have that money used to administer and use it for administrative and management fees. That's not what this is about. The president knows and cares very much about everybody. And he's, and he's guaranteeing that more people in this country are going to be covered. Something that Ted Kennedy, Senator Ted Kennedy, and people yep. were fighting for for 40 years. This is, this is the passion that, um, that we need out of the Democratic Party, out of the, the White House. And, and this is what you get with Hilda Solis. She understands it. She lived it as a kid. She lived it as a young adult, and she's doing a great job right now. And this is what we need to make sure it gets back in 2013. And uh, it, it, is, it is critical, folks, because what, what the secretary is saying um, it needs to be heard, not only on my show, but shows across this country, because there is a choice. We cannot go backwards to the times of 2008 and 2007 and beyond. And we have an, a roadmap. And that roadmap, is, as you say, Secretary, has created 
now 28, 29 months of private sector growth. We have a vision to put people back to work. Right. And we need as something as, as, as the president has talked about, wind, solar, ocean thermal. I had a guy in here, embassy official from the uh, great country of Germany. They have decided that they are going to double down the, on solar and wind. It's a country that has a good economy, as we know. This is a country that is decided by 2022, no more nuclear power. By 2050, they are going to go off of fossil fuels altogether. This is where America needs to start thinking. And this is why the president is so important. I don't hear Mitt Romney talking about anything. You know, he's there in front of Solyndra. This, this Solyndra situation is exactly what we need to do. We need to invest in companies. Now, it didn't work out for them. But I wanted to say one thing. There's somebody who's going to endorse Mr. Romney named Governor Perry. He thinks that Solyndra's a country. I mean, there's no clue about what is going on. You know, it's amazing. Uh, I went before a committee, oversight committee, that Daryl Issa runs over in the House, and he was criticizing us about the lack of jobs in the green sector. And all I could tell him was, let me tell you something, the sector has grown and there's evidence of it. In fact, Brookings uh, put out a report sure. and we saw 2.7 million private sector jobs and jobs created in the green industry. And they're growing in very obscure places that you'd never think of. But naturally, in places like Nevada, California, Massachusetts, Maine, Florida, of all places, and Texas. And guess what? These jobs are going to continue to grow. They're good paying jobs. They're not taking away or disadvantaging us. And guess what? The president is also saying that, you know what, if China is trying to come in here and flood the market by getting our steel and all our raw resources and then bringing them back and trying to somehow flood the market with solar panels, he's saying, no, we're not going to do that. We're going to give American companies a fighting chance. And that has to be made very clear that we are about creating jobs here and making those investments. And this president is willing to do that. The president is tough enough to take on uh, the Republican Party and to take on China. Yes. And, he's, and he understands and he has the compassion enough to think about the DREAM Act and to help kids who are in this country who have last names that are Sanchez and Rodriguez and so forth. And, and Smith. Give them, and Smith. From Ireland and Canada. Exactly. And O'Malley's and others yes. that come from those yes. places. And that, to me, is an, a president that we want and we need in 2013 and, and for the next four years. We could go on for a long time. And we're running. We're running. <laughs> we'll come on. back, though. I'll love to come back. Well, we'd love to. And, and and and. But in these final two minutes, and and I, I, I tell you this, um, there have been fighters on this show, and 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 there and all of these folks are huge supporters of yours. They understand that we need a labor secretary, like like Vice President Biden has said, that is here fighting for you for the ninety nine percent. You know, the 1% doesn't need it. They buy it every day. But the people who are out there making 35000 45000 a medium income family today. 20000 You know, you know. Family of four. Exactly. In neighborhoods where I grew up and Ex still make that amount of money and are trying to make a decent living, paying their tax taxes, trying to do the right thing, and still knowing that somehow there are these these other forces that would like to somehow oppress them, keep them down, suppress their votes, not allow them to have the kinds of programs that the president wants to expand, like affordability for health care, good paying jobs, job training that they need, unemployment assistance that they need. Some people lost their jobs through no fault of their own, like people like Romney, who took those jobs overseas. Exactly. His company, Bain, buys company, burns them, and buries them. And we cannot afford that kind of leadership. We saw it here in Massachusetts, or in Massachusetts where I come from. We know him very well. We get to tell him the truth <laughs> to American people about yeah. who the real Mitt Romney is. Yeah. And we're going on tour, and uh, we're looking forward to tell the American people about it. It is such a pleasure to have you here. We want to do this again, and we look forward to doing it again. We'll be back in Washington and other places. And uh, please, Can I give a yes, number please, here? Go ahead. If people need help or they want to uh, call us about uh, people that are experiencing wage theft or looking for a job or just need help because they want to know more information about what we do, call 1-866-4-USA-DOL. That's one 4 usa dol And we'll be happy to talk to them and help them out. Secretary, thank you so much. I want to thank Stevie G, Kristen Marks, Sarah Billingsley, Jim McCarron, and John Sapacetti, APBU, and, of course, Amy and Robin, too, putting this broadcast together. It's been a great, great, great show, topped off by a great, great uh, guest, Secretary of 
of, of uh, labor at Hello Solis. This is Jeff Santos in Washington, D.C. with help from Robert Fraser and the rest of the folks here. This is Jeff Santos. Gotta go. Woo. All right. <laughs> awesome. That was Woo. good. Wow. That was fantastic. That was fast. Thank you. <laughs> we'll have to do it again.